In India, where high mountains and hot plains meet, there was a need for a chopper that could fly at high altitudes and carry heavy loads. To meet this need, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Turbomika, which is now Saffron Helicopter Engines, set out to create an engine that would change the way Indian rotorcraft work. This is the story of the Shakti 1H1 engine, which is a great example of creativity, technical skill, and the drive to be the best. The Shakti 1H1 engine is based on the Ardidin 1H engine, which is a variant of the Ardidin engine family, developed by Turbomika. The Shakti 1H1 is a turboshaft engine. The engine works on a similar principle to a jet engine, but with a different purpose. Instead of producing thrust directly, the primary function of a turboshaft engine is to generate power to drive the helicopter's rotor system. The engine has annular air intake that surrounds the front portion of the engine. When the helicopter is in flight, it moves through the air, and the circular shape of the intake allows it to collect air from all directions. The shape and design of the intake help direct the airflow towards the engine's compressor section. Inside the engine, the two-stage compressor blades compress the incoming air. The compressor consists of two sets of rotating blades that compress the incoming air. The first stage of the compressor increases the air pressure and the second stage further compresses the air to higher pressures making it suitable for combustion. The compressed air enters the reverse flow combustion chamber. This chamber is designed in a way that the combustion process occurs in a reverse direction compared to the airflow. The compressed air is mixed with fuel, creating a combustible mixture. The mixture is then ignited, leading to controlled combustion and produces the hot gases that generate power. As the gases pass over the turbine blades, they cause the blades and shaft to rotate, extracting power from the hot gases. This rotational energy is transferred to the helicopter's rotor system, enabling flight. The engine incorporates a dual-channel FADEX system, which stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. The FADEX system precisely controls and monitors various engine parameters, including fuel flow, ignition, and other functions. It ensures optimal engine performance, efficiency, and reliability. The Shakti 1H1 engine has more power than the Turbomika 333 engine, which was employed in early versions of the HAL Druv. But the performance of the Druv helicopters was not adequate, and then later, it was replaced by the Shakti engine. This is why the Druv helicopter is able to operate at higher altitudes and carry heavier loads. The TM333 engine, which is used in helicopters, like the Eurocopter Dauphin and Eurocopter Panther, usually has a maximum constant power output of around 950 shaft horsepower. This is a general range, and the real power output can vary based on how the helicopter is set up. On the other hand, the Shakti 1H1 engine can create between 1,400 and 2,000 shaft horsepower. This higher power range is in line with the higher performance needs of the HAL Druv helicopter and the HAL Light Combat helicopter. The Shakti 1H1 engine has more shaft horsepower than well-known engines like the Rolls-Royce M250, Pratt & Whitney PT6, Honeywell T53, and Turbomika Aerial. This is why the LCH is the only attack chopper in the world that can land and take off at 5,000 meters.
Shakti got its ESA clearance in 2009. ESA stands for European Union Aviation Safety Agency. It is a body that is in charge of regulating and overseeing civil aviation safety in Europe. Until now, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited had been partially manufacturing the engines under license from Safran, despite the fact that HAL had already produced 500 Shakti engines and installed them in more than 300 Indian helicopters. HAL and Safran have recently signed agreements that will allow India to produce the entire engine in India, including all of its components and subsystems. For the part of the system that Safran used to manage, they will supply the appropriate transfer of technology. This progress helps India get closer to its goal of becoming less reliant on foreign suppliers, while increasing its self-sufficiency in the defense manufacturing sector.